If you love discussing your favorite films, then do consider becoming an Abstract member. You will find all the necessary links in our description, and I hope to see you there. So what you're about to watch are snippets from a conversation with Lena Yadav, the director of the brilliant film Parched. So a few months ago, we had conducted an offline film screening of the film Parched, and we had also invited Lena Yadav, its director, for a conversation on the film. So what you're about to watch are a few snippets from that conversation. Due to logistical reasons, we couldn't record the entire thing, but you'll still find some really interesting insights that she had to give about gender and society, about filmmaking in general, about her own. own filmmaking journey and i also hope that this gives you an idea about the kind of offline sessions that abstract room has been conducting for some time now and if you are in mumbai or pune then do consider joining our offline sessions as well all in all this was a brilliant session and i hope you have a good time watching this so i would firstly like to ask you uh, so aajkal a lot of conversation has been happening about uh, male gaze and female gaze uh, in films Uh, so how would you how, how does one explain the the idea of uh, the theory rather of male gaze and female gaze to somebody who watches film just for the entertainment sake and who behind the scenes ja ke will never understand what goes behind the camera jiska gaze hota hai kya hota hai how does how do you how do you how would you explain to somebody iske isko is bare mein idea nahi hoga Firstly, my opinion on that is a bit complicated <laughs> because I don't like boxes, and I think in the world we're just increasing the boxes now. Uh, I think films just should just be seen without any filter, without knowing anything, and you have to just have a visceral reaction to what you watch, you know, and that should tell you things. Because I feel there is a female gaze in the way a woman looks at the world. So if you're a director, that gets revealed in the way you will. from the way you tell your story to the way you place your camera to everything it affects everything but i don't think we are female and male gaze just by our sex mm. you know you can have a woman making a film with a very male gaze and you can have a man who has a very strong female gaze could you so, like that like some of the best films made on women uh is pedro almodovar i think yeah. his female characters are am- amazing and the thing is we become who we are conditioned to be as human beings mm. you know uh, mm. some of the biggest patriarchs are not men they are women and that's why there is such a big problem the women are placed in the gateway of patriarchy the first person who tells a child what he or she should believe they are is the mother mm. yeah. so patriarchy is seeped in so much patriarchy is not just about men versus women and The war here is not about men versus women. The war is about conditioning and getting rid of conditioning for both. Mm. You know, uh, there is a lot of time spent on how women need to be healed, but I think men also need a lot of healing from the conditioning that they have been brought under. Mm. Like the character in the film, the husband, you know, who's been living with the knowledge that he is the impotent or the <coughs> infertile one. Mm. So um, the thing, the for me, the villain is conditioning. It's not men or women. but yes i feel like a director so let me put your gaze question in this way that a director will reveal themselves in the film whatever the script if i am i truly don't believe in feminism and i make a really kick ass script which is on feminism i will reveal that i'm not a feminist in the way i shoot my film in the way i uh, project things you know If I make a film on homosexuality and I'm not comfortable with the idea myself, but I'm posing, because now the world is also full of posers who are posing as something, but you scratch the surface and the reality is something else. So if he's a poser who wants to make this film, he will reveal himself in the way he uh, depicts it, because whatever your judgment is will come through in your film. That is something that I believe, and gaze is individual. It could be. male female it could be female posing as male male posing as female <laughs> so that i think one should not look at those boxes before you see a film you mean you see the film and then you analyze it the way you want right is it possible for a um, okay so charlo da for people who don't know is made by satyajit ray wonderful director obviously uh, and the f- that the character was by uh, tagore so both men uh, a wonderful character definitely but is it possible मतलब क्या हमेशा वेन एवर अ मेल डायरेक्टर और अ मेल राइटर और अ मेल आर्टिस्ट ट्राइज टू डिपेक्ट अ वुमन 
क्या कुछ ना कुछ हमेशा रह ही जाएगा अबाउट वट इट इज टू बी अमेन बिकॉज दे हैव नॉट हैड द फर्स्ट हैंड एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ बींग वुमेन हाउ मच एवर आपका रिसर्च हो आपका इंटेंट भी अच्छा हो शायद कुछ हमेशा रह ही जाएगा इज इट डज दैट I can only look at it from my perspective because I've not been a man but I wouldn't like to believe that I'm not able to see a male character more wholesome uh, and that I will leave out something obviously I will bring my perspective into it and that again more than male and female is conditioning it's it's who I have been how I've been learning to see the world you know how much judgment do I bring into my interactions on a day to day basis so um answering it completely from my perspective i think i project my male characters in a very wholesome fashion and i would like to believe that if a man is uh, sensitive enough to try and want to understand it's not uh, it's not rocket science <laughs> <laughs> you said that uh, the first uh, patriarch for a person is the mother uh, that the, the the influence sabse pehle mother ka aata hai so uh, like because i am personally from a business commerce background to mere dimag mein aata hai ki if you want to uh, replace any product you need to bring a better idea or a better product or a better uh, usp anything so if you have to remove patriarchy what is the new product that should be shown the thing is we placed a lot of importance on education hmm. we thought education is supposed to come and sort it out hmm. but edu- education is doing its own conditioning at one level especially in countries like us where there is a lot of influence in the way what we are taught you know everything is manipulated history that you are studying is manipulated hmm. so uh, i mean this was also a big revelation for me when i was doing research for patch hmm. where i was refused permission from around 30 39 villages whenever i went to the village to shoot over there whenever i went to the village they would say oh aap jaise aur aurte aayengi nahi nahi hamari aurte aapko dekh ke corrupt ho jayenge and surprisingly this was not the older generation this was the younger generation who had been educated hmm. who had been educated and who had taken their trucks out into cities and seen that oh my god these women have become demons they've come back and they're becoming even more protective about the women so education is not solving the problem hmm. you know so it is basically from the time you're born anybody who says anything to you everything is an influence you know when you're one or two if somebody tells you that boys don't cry that's for them sometimes i say things that i don't really endorse or believe in yeah. because it's just something you say you know so you have to understand that everything that you put out and for a child that becomes a belief mm. something you have just said so loosely becomes a belief system for the child so it's there are too many steps in actually cleaning this up i mean i, I think we have to keep trying keep trying and um it's one thing cannot do it i personally feel there are more layers to uh, how you depict a character because aap kahan se aate ho is not just your gender or your sex it is also your uh, class it's also your caste it's also Absolutely. education privilege and a lot of things that come in so uh, i i i don't know how much how personal this film is which, which i would like to know right now but for you to go in a different milieu completely in a completely different culture uh, how many levels of filter did you need to have personally to make sure ki yaar i am not showing this as a very touristy thing ya fir ek bahut hi distant perspective se ki oh my god ye kya must colors hai yahan pe i mean you know like how it's sudden this is typical way to see it Uh, how do you make sure ki you are giving it as much respect as it deserves because jaise aajkal kafi baat ho rahi hai about jiski story hai wo khud bole if it's a dalit story then the dalit person should be at the forefront of telling it for example or just whatever the situation be i don't believe in that at all i think that takes away the art from the whole thing hmm. i don't believe that only a lesbian should play a lesbian hmm. this is because cinema is the opportunity to go into a world that is not yours and to immersively go into it not at a superficial level not reading a book mm. to actually go and live that life as that life mm. so i honestly don't agree with this at all and i want to make films which are not my comfort zone because i feel an outside eye if it's coming with real interest mm. it tells you things about yourself that even you're not aware of and i first hand experienced it during past with my cinematographer and editor you know what got their eye and every time i look at the edit and i say shit you know i would never have thought of this but they were an outside eye that was looking at us sometimes 
it's like sometimes a photograph may you see a expression of yours which you didn't even know belonged to your face mm-hmm. every male character who was negative in the mm-hmm. film i was looking for a counterbalance mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. like with the husband i said he's very charming also mm-hmm. the moment he's outside he's yeah. the smartest thing mm-hmm. he's good with people so the thing is there is no black and white mm-hmm. and that's the problem and mm-hmm. genuinely when i wrote this film for me conditioning was my only villain mm-hmm. it was not the men or the women i felt they were all victims too mm-hmm. the process of uh, research was like crazy so we started did research then we wrote the script but when we started trying to get this film made from nobody financing it asim told me that i can make the film that i want and he will arrange for the finance <laughs> which was a very ba- big uphill task at every level but uh, everything started feeding back into the story because like i told you the villages that it, uh, refused that shaped gulab's character for me a lot you know um a lot of incidents which were happening when we were uh, you know doing rekis actually i think then the process of the film also became uh you know uh, with every character i think every person who signed on to do this film became a part of telling that story in so many ways we were all by the end telling the story from our own perspectives including but you know at the edit stage uh the editor was also bringing in things and we were all experiencing things which uh and also before we shot i had a lot of judgment uh workshops with the actors which were really really interesting and so it became like this common dialogue that we were all having uh in the film. what what is the judgment workshop so i do a <coughs> well, i mean i do workshops with my actors trying to find the character which i have written and somewhere which they can own completely so for me the start point is to know what do they feel about the character that they're playing because then they if they say oh i'm going to play this horrible fucking asshole and i've seen that guy in my village which is what my what mahesh told me when i offered him this role that i know this man you know and i'm i know i know i know how evil he is and i said sorry then you can't play this guy because you you have to be inside him you have to have a logic for why you are the way you are so if you are playing it from judgment then you are playing it from i'm playing you and then i'm going to play you now <laughs> you know to be you i have to understand your sense of logic of why you are the way you are hmm. with empathy ma'am did you get a chance to show the film to the village jinke jinse aapne no but i uh, so there was a french uh, network that wanted to come and shoot me showing it to those women but by that time we had death threats on me and asim from that <laughs> so we could no, not from which uh, okay. yeah so we couldn't go back because we didn't want to endanger them so we finally went and did it in another village in haryana how was the so reaction amazing because just the dial so mm. one very interesting reaction i shared with you i mean there was lots of this but uh, like this woman came out and said that oh so you can change your relationship with your daughter in law mm-hmm. <laughs> that it's a process and that to me was such a revelation that everything they see is an example of what can be that's so powerful mm-hmm. if it's used like that mm-hmm. she says i never believed ki i start off like this and then slowly i can become friends because sometimes i'm just tired of being this evil thing and i like her <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it, it was so power it was such a simple thing when it became so powerful shot those scenes we had to get the real villagers Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what I thought. So uh, there is a whole thing that happened when we were shooting. One is that the moment Bijli stent came us uh, came up, that place was really deserted. Villages started shifting closer and closer. Suddenly they were hovering around, you know, uh, and uh, they came uh, in truck loads. It was horrible because I had to position. They were really grabbing the girls. Yeah, they must have. They had to have my assistants all on the front row, and Asim was in charge. They were jerking off openly. It was. It was quite a scene. It became very, very real, and I finished my shoot in four days. Fifth day onwards, for the next one week, they almost broke the set. It was a set first week. They used to come on the ticket window every evening and say, "Bijli chahiye hai, bijli kya hai?" <laughs> and we said, "Nahi hai, we wahan pe we we shooting thi." <laughs> uh, growing up, I think some of my most uh, life changing mentors were women, and I've had some fulfilling, beautiful relationships with women. and it pains me to see how women are pitted against each other because 
if you see the rani lag uh, relationship it's a brilliant relationship yeah. i mean the kind of forgiveness in that relationship is somewhere else mm-hmm. so women are capable of that mm-hmm. that level or a lajju in the end mm-hmm. he telling her husband that it's okay you just accept the child this is what he wanted right this is what it was all about we are used to seeing them in such one dimensional ways as characters that we find that surprising but why why that should not be surprising actually and the homo erotic for me was not uh, homosexual at all that scene um for me touch is a big theme in anything that i do because i feel that something we which we are losing as a human race and especially through europe everybody was only commenting on touch mm-hmm. with patch um for me that scene was a was a dialogue only through touch so actually for my actors also i had given them questions which they were just supposed to perform with touch mm. and in that scene rani tells her i haven't been touched in 7 years i mean that was also a key moment uh, when i decided to make pash i was there was a character called rani who had been you know who had uh, three children and we don't at 14 and when i met her she was 35 or something and at one point and she was getting crank calls <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I told her why don't you meet him she says are you nuts you know whatever turns out to be my neighbor's son <laughs> so she's like i'm just feeling these sensations in my body and i'm loving it so just you know talking about sex is just we've glorified sex into some like who ha it's 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 a physical need and if you can talk about it like that it'll take so much of the shit out of so many things character both of them are very even though they are in like the worst situation possible in life so h- h- why did you come up with that and how did you sort of transpire that so how it started was i it started with i wanted to actually make sex in the village hmm. because i uh, found i found that conversations around sex with women in a village are so much more honest and hmm. unfiltered hmm. and then that's the whole question of oh we are progressive hmm. we have progressed who what does that progressive carry hmm. you know i don't have those conversations that i could have with these women in a village with my own friends here mm. so i actually set out to make that then mm. led to a lot of i went and spent a lot of time with lots of women spending like a day with them mm. and all these characters i inspired from real life except surveen's character mm. uh radhika's character is actually this woman we spent the day with she was fully bruised but she was like the funniest one in the room was cracking all the you know irreverent jokes mm. about men and suddenly when you're with women it's just open like mm. you know they can talk about anything and at one point i said listen i can't bear it but what are these bruises does your mm. husband beat you up mm. and she looked at me she said itne maze aa rahe hain wo to hota hi rehta hai you know that's life mm. so right now we're having fun let's have fun mm. that is something which she's accepted that will happen and then she also went on to tell me poor guy you know he works so hard and so she's been brainwashed to mm-hmm. believe that also she works harder than him mm-hmm. that wo kahan gussa nikalega mere pe to mm-hmm. nikalega mm-hmm. and she sees it as love mm-hmm. so they are all inspired and life is not like okay just because you're depressed and that mm-hmm. for me was a tone that i definitely wanted to hit in this mm-hmm. film mm-hmm. you know just because you're beaten doesn't mean and mm-hmm. that's exactly what i told the dop i said russell i'm not making a sad film mm-hmm. i'm making a film to celebrate these mm-hmm. women mm-hmm. you know i want to celebrate the spirit it's not at all a sad film mm. things are happening which are unjust without underlining them let's show them so, as you said you wanted to make films out of your comfort zone and i love the fact that you don't believe that a person who is in a particular context is tied to it forever and can only tell those stories so gabriel garcia marquez also <coughs> said that why he writes great female characters because he writes them first as humans yes. and then that gender is just the outer covering or the facade yeah. beneath which a human heart lurks So I wanted to ask you that this film essentially could also have, as you said, sex in the village. That was the ethnographic lens with which you would have first approached the subject, yes. sitting with these women, being the invisible person. But with that also, there is that sense of dissociation that comes in that okay, these lives are not mine, and you tend to overcompensate for that with sympathy rather than empathy. So how did you you sort of press that judgment? Did that come across in the form? Because I saw somewhere, even in intimate spaces, you were using wide angles where that moment was being stretched. Somewhere I saw shallow lensing. Somewhere I saw the entire sense of space. So that ethnography spirit, which would have been there maybe while writing the script or researching or shooting on location, 
how did that did that come into the form or content or how did that or did okay, it pervade so I, through i work a lot on judgment okay on myself because for me i am a bigger study for myself <laughs> so whether i'm writing whether i'm thinking i want to i'm attracted to why is it what is it within myself that is seeking an answer mm. so for me any content that i've made is nothing has been made as a project it's part of my life mm. like you know it's part of my growth actually as an individual so when patched happened it started with sex in the village and i said let's blow the pants of sex in the city these are the real conversations <laughs> and then i start writing it and obviously there was so much going on in the world that the darker part started coming in just organically to the writing mm. and while writing it i just had this big aha moment and that for me is the moment that i know i'm going to make this film or whatever is that i'm not telling their story i'm telling my story you know mm. this is exactly happening in my backyard it's more covered up and it's more disguised you know so it's it, it's my story it's my story which is happening there and it's even crazier that this is happening in my backyard because that village doesn't have education doesn't have information mm. so then how do i justify that it's happening right here and uh, my first like when i got a full draft ready i actually as an experiment i sent it to my filmmaker friends across the world okay and for the first time nobody sent me notes they so sent me stories like oh there is you know exactly this bijli i know in istanbul it's not the same story but it's similar i know lajjo here in sweden or america or new york you know so mm. i rea- it that was heartbreaking also that shit this is still going on at mm. this level in the world yeah. and that's the irony that that you now you set it in this village which is actually full of innocence and then you throw it at that and it that, it, that is exactly what happened even in my q and a's across the country especially america america is so like it's happening there <laughs> you know and that makes them feel so comfortable so almost always the first questions would be oh with all the rapes happening in india right now this is so timely yeah, yeah. or oh my god child marriage still exists there so the first thing i would do is show them the mirror and say america has the highest rate of domestic violence and teenage pregnancies how do you explain that so don't be comfortable thinking that it's happening very far away from you it's part of your culture also it just has different names and that suddenly would like just open up the dam and women would just come out you're absolutely right you know this woman living outside my whatever so the easiest thing is to feel judgment and feel comfortable but i think post covid we nobody can feel comfortable because now there are no borders it is humanity and if we are not concerned with humanity happening anywhere there's a problem uh, one point that you uh, shared with us was the the movie is about women being celebrated right and uh, the scene where uh, bijli's friend uh, has uh, sex with radhika apte's character the first thing he does is he actually worships her he actually uh, goes down uh, he uh, bows down bows down his head uh, for her and that is when she uh, everything happens and uh, during the end scene uh, when the people are announcing at the festival that dashara is the uh, i don't know like devour uh, victory of the evil so sorry victory of the good over the evil <laughs> but uh, and they are talking about how women have been celebrated because durga ma killed uh, mahisasura at that time and that is exactly what happens in the scene uh, so these kind of things i really enjoy and i'm glad that you p- put that up when you were starting who were your biggest influences like in s- cinema filmmaking or any other art form or maybe an author well, actually <laughs> sorry van gogh yeah was the first script i ever wrote but uh, i think my first influences were all cowboy films good bad ugly yeah, uh, my dad my dad is to he was in the army and we used to watch a film every week so westerns and the first books i read were louis l'amour so i think that was and i had to totally recreate that world from the written material in my head so that's how visualization yeah. started ma'am what's the best advice you have ever gotten uh, that you think that this has stayed with you or just jo aap hame batana chahoge that uh, i think one of them came from a same only before i shot the first shot of my first film hmm. he said it will never come written on screen ki mere paas extras nahi the mere producer ne paise nahi diye ya ye ho gaya ya my actor was in a bad mood which is a lot of times very probable <laughs> 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 or my actor didn't give me time or came late 
he said nothing is going to be written you're going to be judged for what's there so just remember one thing in every moment make the best mm-hmm. and then leave it you did your best in that moment then don't have either regrets or whatever mm-hmm. that was an experience out next and that for me is a like I actually have to sometimes switch into that mode mm. that okay I've got this 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 what do I do what mm. what can make it the best so that's why I also change my mind a lot of times on set let like I don't work on storyboards because I can never follow storyboards <laughs> for me the energy on that particular day depending on how the actor performed the previous day everything is carried over to mm. every scene so everything is at all times it's a dynamic it's not reached any point of conclusion What is it that you would like to tell us as viewers of cinema as uh, consumers of cinema or any form of art about how we can appreciate art better I think most important thing is uh, time hmm. that genuinely spending time with things hmm. whether it's right now we live in a world where because of social media and all producing an opinion has become such an urgency you know that you should have an opinion before you've really consumed things hmm. let things stay with you for a while i mean when i look at museums also when i travel i see people just go click 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 click, click, click and they out <laughs> and then post i went to da 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 you know take time with art i mean really to understand it also sometimes you're going into experiencing something with so many opinions fed into your own head mm-hmm. you know this whole structure has been built on a lot of false things like reviewers reviewers at one point took over the world like and audience did have get affected by reviewers <coughs> but they were full of their own agendas or their own short fallings most of the time because they were not educated enough to be a reviewer so uh, i mean choose your own way of uh, interacting with art and everybody has a different way i mean i'm sure some people can consume it much faster than others but find that don't go by so i cannot tell you how best you can consume but you just you will realize if you're interacting with things enough or not or you're just in a hurry hmm. to make an opinion i think that's the only difference i can point out to you. 